You know that feeling when you play an amazing shot and even your opponents look at you like, that was unbelievable. Well, in this video, we're gonna teach you one of these shots. It's possibly one of the coolest and most satisfying shots you can play in defense. So we asked a few of the people you've just seen what they call this shot, and they didn't seem to have a name for it. But we know it as the brap, which is what former English player Andy Ellis came up with. So that's what we're calling it in this video. And maybe it can be a word you add to your badminton dictionary too. Now, before we teach you how to play the brap, we need to briefly tell you when you should play it, as there are definitely a few wrong times where you don't want to attempt this shot. So you play the brap when the shuttle comes to your forehand side and at around the height of your racket arm shoulder. And this means you can play the shot from either a flatter shot, like a drive or a flat smash, or if you're really low in your defensive position like this. This is really important as it's almost impossible to play this shot effectively if you're taking it lower than the height of your shoulder. So the brap is best used when your opponents aren't quite on balance, but they still hit a hard shot. However, this can also be used when you're under pressure in defense. You just need a very strong wrist and good timing to do this. So that covers when you should play this shot, but how do you actually do it? Firstly, and probably most importantly, you need to be in a backhand grip. And this is for two reasons. Number one is that you need to use your thumb to help you generate power on the shot. And number two is that if you try to play the shot in a forehand grip, then you'd be too tucked in, making it much harder to play the shot with power and accuracy. So as soon as you see the shuttle coming to your forehand side, wider than your shoulder and at around shoulder height, you want to bring your hand up so that it's roughly in line with your nose and your elbow down. Staying in a backhand grip, your elbow then moves towards your body and you turn your wrist in this motion so the back of the hand finishes up facing the net. If you struggle with this, then try moving your wrist in a similar way like this without holding your racket. Now that's just what you do with your arm, but it's also really important to get your footwork right when playing this shot. You need to be straightening your racket leg as you hit the shot with your non-racket leg remaining bent. This helps you to create power and also enables you to turn your body and be able to play it cross court. And in case you haven't already worked it out, you'd mainly play the shot cross court if you're stood on the right side if you're right-handed and left side if you're left-handed. And this is because your natural swing in the technique we've just described is to go cross. But it is possible to hit it straight if you're stood on the left side if you're right-handed and the right side if you're left-handed. But typically there's less space to hit into on the straight, so it's less likely to be a winning shot. And the brap requires a bigger swing, so you'll need to have a fast racket swing to recover for the next shot. And finally, remember to make sure you're leaning forwards as you hit it, and you're not leaning backwards, as this will make it harder to time and reduce the chance of success. So by this point, hopefully you've realized just how cool this shot is, but how do you practice it so that you can actually do it in a game? Well, we have four great progressions for you. Level one is to get someone to hit one shuttle at a time to the hitting zone. And you can just practice playing this shot with the correct technique. And if you don't have someone that can feed like this, then you can get them to throw the shuttle in. And it's important to focus on the technique more than the power to begin with. The power will come with practice over time. Level two, you can do on your own. Here, you're going to do wall hitting where you hit alternately between the backhand and the brap. This gets you used to going from hitting a shot on the backhand side to hitting a brap and it'll also force you to create a bit more power in your shot. If you can do this, you can definitely do it in a match. Yes, you can, because it's a lot easier when you're able to use the pace from your opponent's shot. And this is what we're going to be doing in level three, where you lift to your partner, they play a flattish smash, and you play a brap. This is going to help you get used to the timing when the shuttle is coming from the back of the court. And of course, practice from both positions that you can play it from. And finally, level four is to play it in a match, but don't try and force it into every rally. You might only play it once or twice throughout a whole match, but when you do pull it off, you, your partner, and your opponents are gonna think you're amazing. So that's a wrap. Let us know if you're gonna try it out by leaving a fire emoji in the comments below and have fun with it. And lastly, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you on another video.